when men decide to follow a anointed God. Men are standing, men are standing, men are standing, men are standing, men are standing. You don't not listen. The reason why they stood is because they recognized who God called them to become. Watch this, watch this, watch this. God speaks a word in this verse, in this chapter, in this verse. Look at verse 3. He says, speak ye unto all the congregations of Israel, saying unto them on the tenth day, here's what I want them to do. Take unto them every man a lamb. And you got to understand, men, that if we're going to be good protectors of our home and good protectors of our family, it's not because of our own strength. Are oh, y'all talking to me up in here? It's because we decided to follow an anointed God. And what God is telling for every man right now is to get you a lamb. Yeah. I'm going to shout in this house in a second. Take a lamb, and not just any kind of lamb, but a chosen lamb. Slay the lamb, take the blood, and then smear it on the doorpost of your house. And watch what God would do if I can get you, a man, to take the blood of a lamb and smear it on the doorpost. Watch this, watch this. Don't get excited. Don't get excited just yet. The application is this. Maybe God is not really handling business at your house the way God wants to handle business at your house. It's because you haven't got your hands dirty in the word of God. You got to take your own physical hands and dip them down in the blood and pull your own hands up and smear it on the doorpost so God can get busy in your own house. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need for God to not get busy, get busy, get busy in my house. He would never get busy in your house until you make the first step. Can I talk to somebody in this? We need for, it says every man this is not the time for us to take leave from the women as it pertains to the protection of our own house. This is not the time for us to become passive as it pertains to us taking leadership in our own community. It's now time for us to roll up our sleeves, stick our hands down in the word of God, pull a word out and tell the devil you ain't coming up in here. We gonna hold you back, not with our own strength, but with the blood of Jesus. You looking at me strange. I wish I had a sanctified church that would testify this morning that the blood still works. The blood will work. Anybody know it? Old folk used to sing a song that says, I know it was the blood that saved me. One day, hallelujah, how down on Calvary's cross he died for me, his blood still. I need to get out of here. Gotta hurry up, got somewhere to go. Dip your hand in the blood. Second of all, not only did these anointed men dip their hands in a chosen lamb, Hallelujah. But also, it was a collective lamb. Chosen lamb. Collected lamb. But thirdly, it was a clean lamb. Watch this. Watch this. They went to the pen, and there was a lot of lambs there, but they had to choose one. And they had to choose a clean lamb, the text suggests, without spot or wrinkle. And then collectively they came back. Is there anybody praying with me? They came back 
with a chosen lamb, with a clean lamb, collectively, and then the lamb was consecrated for a particular purpose. I wish I had time to run through this, but watch this, watch this. Here's where I am. Here's where I am. The reason why we ought to be shouting in here sandwich between slavery and sandwich between freedom is because you know a man that chose the right land. Oh, y'all gonna get mad at me in a second here. Somebody in here ought to be shouting that you was in the household of a real man that chose the right lamb. Somebody ought to be excited in here that maybe my daddy didn't make the right choice, but I praise God that my mama knew enough that when daddy was not there, she went and dipped her hands in the blood of Jesus Christ and brought it back. And now they're safe. Watch this, watch this, watch this. When you choose the right lamb, but collectively get the right lamb and have the right clean lamb and the, the lamb is consecrated, watch what happens. The death angel came. Can we talk for a minute? And the death angel came into the city. You, you saw the movie? Come on. You saw the smoke and the fog. Come on, y'all saw it, y'all saw it. Some of y'all said that was a mighty fine Moses. Y'all saw it. Y'all saw it. But as the angel came in, there was moaning. And there was groaning. The problem was that for those men that did not smear the blood on their doorposts, the death angel crept into their house. And because he crept into their house, he took something that really did not belong to the devil. Can I tell you what he took? He took the firstborn from every household. Watch this, watch this. Now imagine, if you will, the trauma that's going on in the house that is not covered by the blood. Somebody in that house is hollering. Little Timmy won't wake up. Johnny won't move. Something wrong with Sally. Pow, pow, there's a problem up in here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. You are hollering today and you don't even know it. Your complaint is ain't no peace in my house. Your complaint is there's problems in my house. Your complaint is there's, a, there's an issue in my house. Well, the issue will always be in your house until you learn how to cover your house with the blood. Watch this. Don't shout yet. That ain't the shouting part. That ain't the shouting part. Here's the real issue of the story. Every man that had the blood of Jesus on their doorpost wasn't crying the same cry that those that were crying that were not covered because peace resided in their house. So high five. Your neighbor said, neighbor, I need some peace up in my house so I gotta make sure that the blood of Jesus I wish I had help watch this watch this every house that was covered with the blood of Jesus they went to sleep that night in Egypt in peace every house that was covered with the blood of Jesus was able to lay their head down next to a neighbor the neighbor was up all night crying, the neighbor was up all night celebrating, the neighbor was up all night boohooing because they were not covered but the houses that were covered got some peace Boy, I'm finna shout right now look at your neighbor and say neighbor I got to get some peace you only receive peace when you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So now why do they have peace after they're covered by the blood? Well, the blood, watch this now, uh, symbolizes salvation. Woo! That's the reason to shout right there. That's the reason to shout right there. When you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, it symbolizes salvation. Are oh, y'all with me up in here? What can wash away my sin? Y'all gonna help me, aren't you? Nothing but the blood 
of Jesus. Now you got to understand that sin carries a penalty and the only way that sin can be eradicated or the only way that sin can be erased, it had to cost something. Look at your neighbor and say, baby, it had to cost something. God had to pay this through his only begotten son. Jesus had to give up some blood in order to buy you back from the sin penalty. See, that's why I'm shouting today. Watch this now. I'm shouting today because I've been bought with a price. I'm shouting today because I'm not going to hell. I'm shouting today because he reached way down and he picked me up. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Everybody that was on death row, and that's what it was, it was death row, had a reason. One was shouting because they were on their way to hell or on their way to the grave, but the ones that were covered were shouting for another reason. And I'm just trying to make you understand that you go shout, but at least know what you're shouting about. Those that were covered by the blood were shouting because they were safe and secure. They was in a house that had peace under their roof. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Now watch this. Now watch this. Shouting on death row when you have peace in your house. The reason why, the reason why, Danny, the reason why, the reason why they don't want to get with me this morning. I understand, I understand because someone is simply saying, but pastor, even though I'm saved, I am not fully delivered. I understand, I understand, I understand. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. Because, because in new members class, we shouted over, I shouted if they didn't shout. Watch this now, watch this now. Here they are again. The death angel has passed by. They are covered because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you with me so far? Salvation has taken place. Oh, help me preach your word. Salvation, Demetrius, has taken place. But full deliverance has not occurred. And the reason why some of us come to church and we can't shout is because we're sitting next to somebody who's trying to pretend to you that they've been fully delivered and deliverance has not fully taken place in their life. We got so many folk in the church house that are faking it, trying to make it, trying to make you feel like they're already there when the truth of the matter is that they're not there. But they got to learn how to praise God because they're saved. Watch this. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Watch it. Watch this, watch this, watch this. They're on death row, mighty Mama Jackson, but they have not crossed the Red Sea just yet. The Red Sea suggests that I'm free, but on death row, it suggests that I'm safe. And I need to preach to some folk in this house today that know I'm safe, but there's some stuff that I had been delivered from yet. But even though I'm still bound by some stuff, I got to take the opportunity to praise God while I can. Watch this. Watch this. Am I telling you you all live in sin? Heck no. And that's good. I've grown. I said heck no. Y'all know what it normally would be. But come a little closer. You got to celebrate the fact that I ain't what I ought to be. But I so thank God. I'm not what I used to be. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. But I'm working on holiness. I'm working on perfection. I'm working on godly living. There's some old stuff I got to pull off. But I got to put on some new stuff. Is there anybody here ready to make a shift? Is there anybody here ready? Hallelujah. 
come here, come here, come here. Lean forward just a little bit. I want to tell you something. Y'all ain't leaning. Some of y'all leaning. Lean a little bit more. Watch this. Stop letting folk get in your head because you ain't acting like they want you to act. I'm here because God has me here as a pastor. And my preaching to you today is just about over. Now, if you don't think I can preach, follow me on communication and we'll try to. But that ain't what this is about this morning. Watch this, watch this. He wants me to let you know that, that if I can get you saved and covered up under the blood of Jesus, that starts your process of you trying to get to the Red Sea. Because in the Red Sea, the Holy Ghost is going to be moving in your life. And when the Holy Ghost moves in your life, you're going to start seeing signs. And you're going to start seeing some wonders. But until you get to that point, you got to learn how to pray. Praise, praise God for what you have right now. Is there anybody in the house really want to praise God? Come on, come on, come on. Is there anybody in the house really want to praise God? Is there anybody in the house really want to praise God? Is there anybody in the house want to praise God? Because God saved you. Because God covered you. You might be on death row, baby. But you got a reason to tell the Lord, thank you. Because thank God you're on death row. And death row is not on you. Is there anybody in the house that can go through some stuff now and still have a sense of peace because you know God is by your side. High five your neighbor said neighbor. I got a reason to shout in this house because God is by my side. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor Why don't you high five somebody and say, I'm 